the tale starts off a little snoyach neach is static tomoi with the rest of. Why did he use a lotion with the rest of? Tomoi with In his lifetime, he was a tomoi. So obviously, there are different lifetimes that we're talking about. The Gemara says he lived, he saw an oilum, the Yana, a full world, then he saw it destroyed, and then he saw it rebuilt. So he really. Well, the, the marble was only one year, so you don't really count that, but it, he lived two different generations in his lifetime. One before the marble, one after the marble. The Gemara says that we say the Yerotz in Kimei that it says there that either when they, it goes on Hevel, that there was no, or, or Noyach, that there was no, that Hevel or Noyach, there was no Avedi Zohar in their lifetime. Hevel, however long he lived, 50 days, a half a year, whatever it is, no big cash. About, by Noyach, there definitely was a Vedizor in his lifetime. The Vedizor started by Yenish. So what do you mean there was no Vedizor in his lifetime? It means if we divide his lifetime into two types of lives, so the first one had a Vedizor, but the second one did not have a Vedizor. That Nafkamina is that when, after the 350 years after the marble that he lived, they came to the Migdol, and that's when, uh, when, it, when it was. So he, the Migdol uh, was a problem of the <coughs> fact that they, um, they didn't believe in Hashem, that he's the creator. And they, they knew there was a, obviously a, ben, a rabbinish in the world, because I was going to fight with him about. So obviously there's something. But the question is, is he the creator? Is he a manager? Is he a what? And that is puppeted to what they were arguing on. So they didn't believe in that, being Hashem. So this is the point that they did. And he told them Tzaddik Tomim. Now Tzaddik is, is the guy that's right. When you say a guy is right, that means there's somebody arguing on him. And when, you, when someone's arguing, you say, Yo, he's right, not you. Okay. Tomim is everybody seems to agree that he's a good person. person. So the Shiva has worked on it <coughs> because later on Benjamin says uh Shem al Nayak, I saw Isko Reisi Tzadik Lefonai Badurazer. I saw you as a tzadik. Now if Tomim is a bigger mile than tzadik, and true you can't say Koshwachov Bifanov, but at least take the the, the bigger the bigger shvach. Why take the smaller shvach? So she wanted to say that definitely there are times in life when a person has to be a tzaddik, he can't be a tummy. <clears throat> he has to take a stand. He has to put himself into the fight. He can't just say, let, oh, okay, you know, whatever it is there and forget about the world. And that's the, that's the point that the time in the marble, he was a boy who went out to fight the Torah and he was called a tzaddik. You can also tie it that it's a development person is a tzaddik, and if he continues on the way of being a tzaddik, he ultimately will become a tomim that everybody will agree with him. And so one will be afraid to argue with him. Okay. Now, the uh, Rashi brings down a uh, whether it's a Goloshin Genai or Goloshin Shvach, that is a tzaddik v'dayoyso, meaning only be the rice if he was a tzaddik, but if he would have lived in the other of his time, he would have been considered nothing. And on the other hand, the other one says, if he would have been in the time, he'd be a much bigger tzaddik. The problem, uh, it's not a push it is out. The, 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 uh, the singing of uh, That somehow it sounds like a little bit of a put down to Noyach. And Noyach was a big man. And let's, let's see how big he was. It's what we understand it. Uh, it says, Who's talking to Rabbanish? To Noyach. Ayem Elikim and Noyach. Ayem Elikim, Ayem Elikim, Elikim, Elikim. Midas Adin is talking to Noyach. Vayavram is Vayim Hashem. God, 
Let me be this Rachman was talking to him. So obviously a person reacts differently to different types of instructions and so on. So Layach obviously was a very big man. But the Avoida, I think, what he's trying is what she's trying to say. The Avoida is Alekimis Halech Noyach. Is not a proper Avoida after Avram got Halech Fonai Vehi Somit. Now, the concept of Alekimis Halech Noyach means we walk together. That means God is blessing me along the whole way. I see Broche, I see Atzloche. If you see that way, of course you're going to be successful. You're going to keep, you're going to keep going with, 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 with the thing. Of course you're going to believe. Of course you're going to have a By Avram, he was told, it's halach lefanai. But this was only told he was 99 years old. So the Avram that he's talking about, Rashi, is the Avram after 99. Not the Avram when he was a little kid. And that's the difference between... Uh, the thing is, Lekim Salech Lefonai means you have to raise your kids in a different way. Um, what he's telling you, there's no Shav Yonish, you're not going to see anything. And yet you have to make, be able to teach your kids that they have to believe. How are you going to teach it? <coughs> the less you watch Salem Haba, you tell them, I don't know. And then you tell them, but... We're supposed to have a, good, a, lot, a lot of enjoyment there. Yeah, we have to eat ice cream? No, no ice cream in that world. And what else do we have? We have nothing, no physical thing in that world. So what's the enjoyment? Right? We don't understand. So somehow we have to bring up our kids with a value system that they understand that the Torah is primary in their lives. This is the most important thing in their life. And you go to yeshivas, and you'll see kids that the if they will be in public school somewhere else, they will talk about the state championships, they'll talk about these type of things. And in yeshiva, they talk about bechines, human things of that sort. So you made a value system that this is equal, the anoye that they got, when they make that see them, it's the same thing when they see their team winning, the, team, the state championship. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling of, of great satisfaction. And, the, and that you have to build up before you're able to teach it. Okay. Anyway, he tells him to make, uh, it took 120 years to build the Teva. That's a long time. But you got to understand, there was no power drills. No electric saw. The basic saw and these things may have existed because Tula Kayim probably invented them. And all knowledge, all human knowledge was probably invested in Tanoyach at that time. That was, he was the one that came from the marble. What, we, what was the Chochmis that were developed before the marble? He talked about uh, Yuval. That he was uh, what he called. He made music. Uh, what, what he called made the uh, kind of made tools. Obviously, there was a lot of industry that existed before the marble and stuff like that. What happened to it? Did it get destroyed in the marble? No, because Noach knew it and he continued to know it. And that's why could be that the Flogger was someone a tiny that it, uh, that it's a space station, some similar to a space station. Uh, if that's the case, then obviously they have to have uh, a, a greater uh, understanding of what they can fix in physics, whatever they need for that, and so on. But he built this table. And he tells them he's going to bring a marble and Tovio, uh, he says, two of each animal will come to the table. Okay, that he says, and he took all the food and whatever it is there. Obviously, there was Nisim involved, no matter how big the table was, to take enough food for all the animals of the world, all the things, and keep the schmutz in there, and everything, and to live. And you know, I'm talking about one floor dedicated to all the living animals, one floor dedicated to the schmutz, one floor dedicated to humans. You know, uh, 
it, it shouldn't last. All of us, uh, it was a nest anyway, and uh, I guess you could have, uh, uh, you could have supported more people into the table if we were to come in there. And like you see, obviously, Sichon supposedly got in there. How he got in there and that, I have no idea. Yeah. And that's Elukim told him that. So the king showed that at that time no favoritism, no such thing as a Jew is not. It's only two of every men. Kosher treif don't make a difference. Hashem Then Hashem speaks in Nayach. And he tells him the same thing. I want you to take it, but I want you to take seven kosher. And the reason for that is, is because you're going to be matter of kobonis after the mapo. I'm giving you an aitzit to be matter of kobonis after the mapo. And by doing that, you're going to be able to bring rachm into the world. And he, so all of a sudden now, it's a contradictory command to a lakim. A lakim said only two. So if we learn shat, two is a minimum, and more could have come in. So okay, it's maybe it's no kasha. But if a child is that I can only take two, you can't take four, and stuff like that. So how come it's telling me over here that the Hashem was? So you can learn that Hashem made it, that the, the, the kosher, and uh, even though I said, for Ashi's mashma, they had to go get it. Uh, I mean, they came to him, uh, but Lamai said, from, from one of Rashi's mashma also, that he said, I you're going to have to go get the rest of them. Two will come to you by themselves. Five, the extra, the extra that you need, that will you'll have to go get. Okay. And it's going to rain. Now, the question is, really, what do you need the rain for? Uh, 40 days of rain, I really don't know how much flooding would be, but don't sound that hit to the top of uh, uh, Everest, 15 hours above, for 40 days. The really, the Benishul made it the, that the water of the marble was hot. And the water was hot, it melted the ice caps. And all of a sudden, the, where the Benishul took the original ice caps, created them from the water that surrounded the earth. In other words, he had to put it someplace, and therefore the ice caps support the, the, the water, the ice above the water. And that's the thing, that, and like they say, you know, if, you, if you, uh, you want Florida to disappear, it should be one degree or two degrees or something uh, warmer in the world, and all of a sudden you won't have any Florida. So the original, so that could be very simply how to arrange them kept the world. It was Dor Enosh. He sunk a third of the world. So if he sunk a third of the world in Dor Enosh, so it had also been a, a melting pot. So it was, it was global warming that came up and it was colder before, so therefore you were able to maintain a bigger ice cap. And now it became warmer, so you lost a part of the ice cap. And now for the, for the marble, he flooded the whole thing. And thing this. You really don't need the rain. You have enough water to, to take care of everything. So the reason he wanted the rain is the rain shows God's mercy or anger. Sometimes they have a very soft rain, a nice rain. It's Gishbe You know, this is, this is the rain that's going to make us grow. So for that. And then there's an angry rain, stormy, really sharp, whatever it is. That so to do tshuva, he wanted to show them, you guys can do tshuva. That's why 40 days that he needed that I don't know, probably they were wiped out before, but I can't answer that. The Mayanos Tehaim is also, is the same point of rain, just being more hot water to melt the ice. That, 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 that the, uh, I saw in the uh, your TED, uh, I can't remember how long ago, I think it was in the your TED, a theory that the Mayanos Tehaim were the explosion of the volcanoes. In other words, where, where's the lava come from? Where's all this stuff come from? It comes somewhere in the deep in the earth. This liquid is what he called that comes up. 
and he brought them up. So he would claim that, I uh, wanted to claim that uh, the fact that all of them blew at one time, so let's say there's a million of them, I don't know how many there are, it threw the earth off kilter. Now till, till, uh, till Noyach Mashma, there was, there was no seasons. There was, always, there was always the same temperature. But after Noyach, it says, and after you think, I mean, it's going to be cold, curve, v'chayim, v'kayitz, v'chayvaf, v'chayv, v'yayim, v'layl. There's going to be, there's going to be seasons now. So that happens because the earth is off the kilter. So that could be. I mean, that's your theory, though. It's, you know, it doesn't mean anything. But I guess that also, they, definitely if it was volcanoes, contributed to, we'll call it global warming, to melt the ice. Could be. <laughs> it could also be, you know. So that way, there's no contradiction between the Tzivu of Hashem and the Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, one thing the Avenger made, and this we see, not only in this time, we had it by by the the hungry years in its time that you're not allowed to live with your wife during a time of hunger. You're not allowed to live with your wife in a time of troubles of the world being destroyed. In other words, you have to suffer it in a certain way with the world. You can't forget yourself. You, can't, you have to see the tzad of the whole world is laying on you. And that's what you have to feel. We have three of them, supposedly, from Shama Shalei of Ateva. Uh, which was the, the raven, which is, or, 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 I don't know if all the crows or all the ravens the same in, and I always thought the raven was the big one. Some people told me the crow's the big one, I don't know. But it's a, it's an iceberg, and, but the children are white. And that's the thing that they don't even know to feed their own children because they don't believe they're on the children, they're black. So the white is not thing, and yet the Avenger provides for him. That's the, one of the things you see in the Halalukas, that, that we gave the food to the, to the raven. The dog, which became technically an avid, uh, man's best friend, if you want to call it, but they obey man completely. And then this Chum, who, uh, what do you call it? Now I can say Chum, the when he comes to praying for <coughs> Sdaim, he's, he's, they consider him a tzaddik. Of course, they're looking for how many people that they can, that they can convince to ask how many tzaddik you have to be in Sdaim to be able to save it. So we want to learn for the marble. So as she brings down, there was only eight by the marble. Uh, the three sons and their wives and then another son's wife, eight. And but here it seems <coughs> he was a Russia. I mean, if he, if he did something he shouldn't have done, he was a Russia. That could be one time if Sichon was in the Teva and Sichon lived with his wife, uh, with, with Chom's wife, Chom wanted to make sure that the child is a kid of his, not, uh, not, 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 not uh, Sichon's. So therefore, he had to live with his wife there. And it could be, it's a small, it's a bad log, you say. Yeah. It says, he came, with play Mehamabu. Then he came into the Teva because of the Mabu. As she says, he's a Ketane Mona. Didn't know if it's coming or not. Don't make sense. 120 years he, he spends building a Teva. You know, what do you mean he doesn't expect it to come? Of course he knows it's going to come. And Anavi, it's also something, I mean, how do you know he wasn't uh, dreaming? You know, uh, so obviously it says Anavi knows when God is speaking. In other words, if it's a dream or it's something, it's like it's something beyond it. It takes maybe time to wake him up because he doesn't have to adjust just to think like by Shmuel. He thought it was Ailey calling him, so he went to, to Ailey and then he told him that Ailey understood it. So, so he told him to uh, listen. 
But the but the idea is that that Navi knows. So if he knew that uh, what well, is Mabel's what's pshat? So Shiva went to different pshat, and he calls Mikhtani Amona, meaning he he didn't know if he has to <coughs> suffer with the table. Now when he went into the table when it started to rain, right? Till then he was outside the table. Maybe the bench had told him, I want you to go into the table now, a week earlier. I want you to suffer a week in the table, cramped up in this box with all the living things there for an extra couple of weeks. How do you know? How do you know you're supposed to be outside as long as it's not raining? Now, of us, I'm supposed to be, that, that's what the whole idea is. You're supposed to go and... Uh, Yeah, the rain is what's forcing me into it. So, you know, so I should have learned that the shot is that he sort of suffered with the world, and that's what he didn't do. Not that he didn't think it's coming. He didn't think that he's part of the Einish of the marble, and he's part of the Einish. The so Benjamin wanted to make could have made him uh, a stadium, or a with a little to stop, put a top of to come up like Shemayim. Could have done anything to keep him from, from getting killed. Elavos, he did it by putting him in a box, and he and, and he and he locked up in a box for a year, and they didn't sleep that year. Uh, I, I, whatever it means, they didn't sleep. I mean, obviously, he had to sometimes be energized, but they were constantly busy. It wasn't the point that they had time. Sleeping, to get up and do something. What it is, and the reason for it is because he had to feed all of these animals. Now, this ended the first phase of the world. The world that's uh, 1,666 years of civilization that existed. So of the 5,780, we have to deduct to understand how long our civilization is. It's only about three, four to 4,000 years because we're after the marble that started Mayach again with the new civilization. And therefore it's a completely different thing. Now what was exactly the experiment that the Avanshan wanted here or that, I can't answer it, I don't know. But what Pshat is, the Benjamin wanted a world that can exist by the people. And if he gave a Torah, in other words, he created the Torah many years before the, Torah, the world. And the Torah is what he wanted, how people should act. That's what he wanted, right? So he, the, the way they started, he wanted to start it. All people all have the same chance, whatever it is. Obviously, that didn't work. And uh, I don't know if we mentioned it last week, but you see that the, I can't say the average time of, uh, of religion, even with the guy being around, as the Saif Mavum, Saif Noyach, is about, I mean, five from Odom and five from Noah, is about 300 years. You don't have more than that. Before it fades into, uh, into a or whatever it is. There. So, and that was Avram Steiner, we'll talk about it, that he said, you know, if you want just another religion, it's going to last um, a couple hundred years, and that's it. But if you want uh, something else, there has to be people taking over. We'll talk about it. So, yeah. Okay, and they landed up in Hori Arorot, not in Everest. So first of all, uh, the, they, they make a cheshbon of how many, that there was the, the amo, that the, the teva was in, into the water, 11 amos. In other words, 30 amos high, 
but only twenty nine, only thirty, thirty amis minus eleven. Nineteen amis above the water, and then eleven amis are below the water. Okay, that's 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 what they they were. Uh, but so the bottom will hit some things, 11 amas, still covers water. So there's full water on the ground while he hits the thing. But what's the odds that you're going to hit Everest or the top, tallest mountain? You're going to hit wherever it'll be. Well, well, you, know, you happen to be in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I mean, you don't want to hit anything. Well, uh, so, or whatever it is, he landed up in Hariyahuot. And they actually uh, have still expeditions that go up there to find out what, 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 because there is something there. Tavis stopped and he had to wait all those days and he finally opened up the Chalain and he saw and he sends out the Ayrev. The Ayrev for whatever reason is supposed to be Shliach, so finally you are Novi, whatever it is there, but he's a type of bird and there's only two of them and uh, one doesn't want to go. No words, he chased me away, whatever the Lashen is, are you going to take my wife? You know, the idea is we can be separate and who knows what's going to happen. So, he never let him back into the Teva. Now, how long can a bird fly? So, obviously, he had let him to perch on the Teva, he let him to that, but he never took him into the Teva. Because by the by the Yaina it says he took him and brought him into the table. Here he just did it until the water. Well, what it means by Elio, I know I don't know. But it has been Okay. Wait another seven days and uh And he sends out the Yainu who comes back with an Aliza with Alizais. And Rashi brings down that it's a Moshe the Yainu said, I'd rather eat from her God, uh, you know, bitter than to eat from uh, what he called. And I heard Rabonim uh, teachers, so my Yainical uh, asked this question, that's not nice. Well, that's not nice. You're telling Noyah who saved you that I'd rather eat from God than from you? Why is that nice? First grade. So obviously, and I heard from a lover of Gosh it was Musa to Noyah. If you wouldn't steal, I'd, I'd rather not steal. It's fine. But the Gemara says he's talking to God, not to, not, not to Noyah. Said to God, I tried to eat yours. So to God, is no cash. So it's, you know, you got to know a little something because to teach something like you, what the kid can hold is not nice and still say it's a tzaddik and stuff like that, it's not good. Unless you have an answer. Yeah. Okay, now there's a. Uh, Russian here just wanted to think. He, he, he says to he says to when they leave, same in Ateva, you and your wife and your children and their wives, meaning that now you're allowed to live together. As opposed to when he said you and your children and their wife, your wife and their wives. Right. But in the end it says um, they went out separately. So, 
why, why does it say that separately? So say, so both things are right. I think the Torah wants to teach us something about relationships with a person and his wife. A person, two people get married. They judge the world that's going to exist like their parents' world. We can have a couple of fights. There'll be enough money for food. Uh, extra stuff we, w we won't be having, but whatever it is. There. But life changes. That's not how life always turns out. And therefore, I don't really know if my wife is going to be my wife, the same wife that I married. Maybe somebody different. I would assume he was the biggest test in the world. Aisha Snayach had no idea they went into a table. And she's going to be there for a year without this and that more and speak up all night. So after the year that they came out, he's able to see a part of his wife that he never knew that existed before. Because in the normal course of life, he wouldn't have seen such a thing. Wouldn't have been. So he definitely said so his mindless that people pick up about the relationships <coughs> with their wives. And someone is that you understand that we're not simple people. And things are vivid, and sometimes we can take the pressure, and sometimes we can't take the pressure. And that's where you have getting and all these type of things. Okay. Now, we got to see... How from the words that it's put separately? I'm sorry? How has that gotten from the fact that after it said separately? How is that from the... The fact that first he tells them to go out together, and they went out separately. So obviously the hetta did not exist when they went out of the table. So, so what was the point of putting the lush in there? She told them afterwards. Um, now we got to say something about the union of Kobonis here. We got Beinayach being different than anybody else in the world ever, ever, ever was. The Kobonis of Cain of Kain and Hevel, Adam and Rosh at that time, was you want to give a gift to Kodesh Baruch Hu, you pull the Mizbeach, you put this gift on the Mizbeach, and you go away. You come back 15 minutes later, it's still there, you know it wasn't accepted. You know, it's not there anymore, you know it was accepted. Okay. But you didn't create anything. The Vesha was the one that did the choosing. Noyach had to create a reyach nechoyach, the rabbin is him, that it is a reyach nechoyach, something that's very favorable to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that he wants. And that's what he did. A yorach Hashem is reyach nechoyach. A yorach Hashem is reyach nechoyach. He made it was a reyach nechoyach before Hashem smelled it. He was it. Now, and he, how does our Kobonis all work? Also, only for fire from Hashem. The original fire came down by the Mishkan, by the Beis Hamikdash. So I came with Then, after that, you had to eat a little every day, but it never went out the fire. It's always there forever, and therefore, it was very really cool. So I'm saying, so he always had the reich nechayach is from God. I'm accepting it, but the Maaseh by Noi by Noiach, he had to do it himself. So he shows a tremendous amount of regi of Noyach. Yeah, he made the, uh, the Keshes, which is the rainbow, as the simon that he won't destroy the world again through a mob. And you see it usually after it rains. Not in, put it that way. When you see it, it's usually after it rains, because it's not always around. But the mile is it shouldn't be around. In other words, the fact that the Benjamin has to remember the police, that means he's, he, he, he deserves to be destroyed. Except he remembers the bliss, he's not going to destroy us. So they say in the time of Yeshua and Levi, there was no rainbows. Because the world was, the source of Yeshua and Levi was that, they, that the whole world will not be destroyed. So they didn't need, there was no need of a rainbow. 
So the singular rainbow, and that's why you don't not, shouldn't really look at it and you're stackle in it, is because of uh, these things. It's not a simon poch, it's a simon that were not good, and what do you call it? Now, I don't understand, though, is obviously it's not one white rainbow for the world. It rained in New York. So in New York, we saw a rainbow. It didn't reach California, so there's no rainbow in California. So what does it mean that the people in New York are that bad? That I don't know. I mean, I do, what is the advantage of teaching us by seeing the rainbow? But uh, obviously, it's a tiny to us. I heard this word from uh, Rabbi Lurcher in the good time. Uh, when we count the children of uh, Chum, Kenan is the last one. He has uh, four children. Uh, Chum, uh, what's it? What's it? Uh, when they Chum, Kush, Mitzrayim, Futu, Kenan. He's the youngest. So how come the Torah writes this over here? Uh, where is it? Now, Chum is the father of Kenan. Chum is not born until four years later. So what are you, what are you mentioning him at all? At all? So I relate to Tainid that he was taka born in the Teva. He's the oldest. He was from what he lived with his wife in the Teva. And, and the Teva says, hey, this is taka Chum's kid, not Sichan's kid, that's Chum's kid. And uh, what do you call um, Yes, yeah, so, so, and, and he's mentioned last over there further because he's in, in consideration of the children, he's less than the list. Like you have find that by Kedolaya, <coughs> by Ambrofel. He's counted in the beginning, he may have Shinok. And then the other place where he counts the four kings is the five kings, he counts Shinok, the <coughs> third one. So the same thing is heavy. Uh, by the, the kings of Midian, he counts them as the third one, even though he's the first one. And the time is because they did something bad, they're not giving the shivas of being the first one. You, you could say that in Rashi when Rashi says Nayak cursed his fourth his fourth son. I'm sorry. Rashi seems to say that, that Kanam was the fourth son. Right. This is what would work like Rashi. Rashi would be meaning that it's. They just demeaned him. They just lowered him. I'm saying Pshat. I mean, it's it's a it, it didn't ask the kasha right. Why does Rashi ask the kasha? Why Tucker says. What, 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 are you, what are you telling to me over here for? He's the only one relevant to I don't know. Well, not necessarily the same. I'm not giving it. Rashi says, Yeah. He calls Kanan, Yeah, good. But I'm saying, fine. I can understand that. But he doesn't bother answering the question, though. That's what I'm saying. So good. I'm saying it's a good, it's a good tell it sort of question. What, is, what it means something, I don't know. You know, Rashi, Rashi doesn't agree with it, that's for sure. <coughs> okay. Now it's interesting, you know, the pigmentation, uh, that's part of the, the clover to, to hum. And if you look at the Chum, probably had the most nations coming out of them. Uh, counting the 70 nations, Chum probably has the most. Not all of them are exactly black. And so I assume brown is also from the time was brown, not black necessarily. India could be brown, not black. Even though they don't count the deer here at all, I mean, in the so they the difference. So Yefes was white skinned, pale complexion, 
Therefore, they took the northern countries. What are the countries from him? I will tell us many. Now, I have seen from you. I have seen from you. I have seen from you. I don't know who these guys are. Maybe we'll find out. It's going to come along. Gogmel, 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 Yep. Yovon, the Greeks, the Medians, Suvo, Meshach, and Thiros, I consider the Russians, the Slavs, and so on like that. When they go to Ashkenaz, the Rifas, they go down to the German states, nations. All of these live in a cold climate where the sun does not get that hot at the times they live in the north. The Germanic tribes, which you call them, the Danish, the Swedish, the, the, all those type of things. The English is possibly part of it. And Germany. Europe, you, 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 you see, you imagine Europe, the temperature of Europe uh, is Canada, not the United States. It's cold in Europe. And again, the, and that's why uh, Scotland is almost near the North Pole. And I think the like, look at it, it's right in the middle of the map. Yeah, you know, it's down there. Yeah. Okay. Rashi brings in Mar-Numa that, uh, that huh? Tiras is Paras, which is Iran, right? Persia is uh, at least... Uh, Modai is... Uh, and Tiras, Rashi says, is Paras, right? That's yes, Iran. that's it. That's, Paris, yeah, that's Iran, which is... Uh, yeah. I, mean, it's I don't know. I don't want you know the, the temperature can't think over there. You see, the Iranians are not white. And they're they're definitely white. higher than healthy soil. It's it's closer to know. right up above Iran is Siberia. I don't know that you can bring it right. I think people's skin nowadays is not fair. It makes everybody else. It's not that they're no longer the original. But I'm saying that area is like the Middle East. Oh, it's the northern uh, part of Iran. It's more white. Right, it's besides the more northern, northern. They're not the original Parats. Yeah, yeah, but you'll see what's worse. That's the difference, but if you remember Hitler, yeah. he made a, a treaty with, 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 uh, with Iran over there because uh, they were considered uh, 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 Yaftites. That's what he's considered himself. They, they, they all came from the Teva, Hitler's concept, you know, what do you call it? The, 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 the chosen people, whatever you are, the, the, the right race, whatever, whatever you call it. And, and, and the fact and, and the Chum, I mean, shame is a, uh, is a olive-skinned people. That's the natural color of the Yidden. That's why you have, uh, what do you call it, uh, Tzoraz is only by, by Jewish people. Can't be by the, I mean, or Mediterranean people. That's that, they still live in a temperate zone. And then they have uh, Chum, who live in a hot zone. Because they can absorb the heat. So. Now, uh, Zaydi wants to, she said that how wanted to claim, even though here it says they took over the, the, the uh, it says the is Kitim. It's one of Greek sons, right? Um, who are they? We have Tzvoi becoming the king of Kitim. The Shiva told me something very strange. Uh, we all know that China was not called China. It's called Cathay. In Russian, it's Kitai. And it's, I mean, that's the Kitim. In other words, the yellow race, as we call it, are also Yefes people. Okay. So population-wise, it comes out that the Yefes people probably are most, most in the world. And, you know, and, yeah. and Chum, as I said, the most can, uh, nations. And the Indians come from Chum, from from Chum. When it's time, Lohlad is Lohavim. So Rashi translates what's called Lohavim. Lohavim, the skins were red, like fire. Uh, I've only seen an, an Indian once or twice. 
Uh, I don't even know if they were really Indians or not. And they looked brown to me. And I really saw red, what you call, call red. I don't see yellow in the Chinese anyway, so I can't even see what it means. So I guess you got to be more medagdic in the lush and in the, in the what they are. But yet, the red Indian was Zaycha somehow to land up and control North and South America. Leave the old world, as you call, the west of the eastern hemisphere, and go to the western hemisphere, and they're the only ones here. Different <coughs> tribes of them, but they're all redskins. And what do you call up there? Was it, was it North America for sure? But even in South America, they, they, they were basically Indians. And what do you call it? A different type of uh, thing. Why were they so and how did they get here? Okay. You could say according across the Bering Strait, basically, but who knows? I have no idea. Or the Pacific Ocean. Now, not all the children became nations. Like you have the Kushyolatis Nimrod, right? He obviously was not a nation in himself. But they are nations. And yet Nimrod became the king. So exactly uh, how these things and why one say and we find that by us too in the Shvatim, that by Don, all the children of Don come from one person, Hushim ben Don. That's it. He only had one kid, and he had all the kids, and only had one family. If Ephraim, less of the 30,000, whatever it is there, or even, even the Shimon, it's five, six, three. Why? Why are these so many tribes? This is only uh, Mishpachas and so on. So Rashi says because he got more, a lot of them. Obviously, the whole shaver is less than, the, than that one guy's family. So what do you say? A lot, a lot of them. How much is a lot? Otherwise, it must be something that that it's something special about this mida or something looks uh, acting something about it that, that makes them something different than the other nations. And we are different nations. Um, this I learned about uh, from a person at a hotel. Short order cooks. Usually, in those years years ago, when I'm talking about 50 years ago, uh, most of them were Chinese. They worked in they have to work in a hot kitchen in the country, stuff like that, and not ideal conditions. It wasn't their conditions? It wasn't what he called. It's hot, and you have two of them, and they get into an argument, and you got knives, and then it's a lot of danger. What happens is, when that happened, one or the other would run out in the street, away from it, to try to break the contact, because they have that, that cast will come out. The Japanese, by the, uh, just told by the Mira years ago, that their tendency was to be, uh, to get very angry very quickly. But you can fight us very quickly too. They can change moods very quickly from anger to this. So all of these things are meters of the people we have. You know, we have different nations, we have our, what do you call it, uh, the guy has a tendency, or murder doesn't bother him, or, or killing doesn't bother him, whatever it is doesn't bother him. And things of that sort. So that we have different meters. So it could be that's what it means that they divide into different families, different children. But the Canaan had a lot of nations. And when we, we're talking about, we're talking about seven nations of Canaan, but he had over 11, I think. And 
On the other hand, shame also, where were the big empires of shame. So Elam, Asher, that seems to be, and Aram, those seems to be the three empires that they had. Oh, sorry. Anyway, have a good Shabbos, everybody. Mm -hmm.